Hey guys, Danny Litvin from Sana Ayurveda here, and today we have for you a new episode of Ayurvedic Q&A. Today's episode is brought to you by Sana's Ayurvedic Nutrition and Lifestyle Coaching Program. Your opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one guidance to create a custom-made plan for you to be the most vibrant, healthy, excited, enthusiastic you possible. Sessions can be done in person or online. A lot more information in the link below in the comments. So today's question comes from Kristen via our Arveda NJ Facebook group, link below. And she asks, <clears throat> does Ayurveda address psoriasis? If so, how would one go about treating it? Question mark, exclamation point. Well, Kristen, Ayurveda does address psoriasis and will address psoriasis in this episode. Psoriasis is an autoimmune condition of the skin. What happens with the case of psoriasis is that an autoimmune response will cause inflammation in the skin. And this inflammation is caused by a misguided belief through lack of cellular communication that happens through that autoimmune, autoimmune response, which says we need new skin cells stat right away. But the truth is that everything is fine. So we have this rapid proliferation of new skin cells and the fine ones, the old ones that are already there, start to get denser and denser and denser as the new ones build up, 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 up. And this new layer of skin, of dense, um, compact skin is your psoriasis. Now this can manifest in a lot of different ways and there's a lot of different cases and manifestations of psoriasis. So it might cause dryness, it might cause cracked skin, and that dry, cracked skin might cause uh, bleeding. It might be very irritable, might be very itchy. It might be burning or painful, or it could be blistered of just a slew of different ways it can manifest. And this can manifest in little tiny patches, it could be in broader areas, and it could be anywhere in the body and across the body. Now psoriasis is something that usually you don't have 24-7, 365 days uh, around the year. Usually it comes in spurts, and those spurts can be brought on by most commonly stress, also by infection, uh, weak immunity. It could be from a skin trauma, so getting bruised, getting cut, or being in the sun too long, getting sunburnt. It can be a improper drug reaction. And it could also just be from poor lifestyle, poor nutrition, um, and just pollutants in the air around you. Now, according to Ayurveda, something like an autoimmune condition is going to be a very deep layered condition. So it will be something that you'd want to seek out one-on-one -on -one guidance with. It's not something that um, we'll be able to address as simply as just do these five steps and you'll be you know, cured and good forever. But what we'll do in this video is give you about five, six different things that you can look into. They can start to play around with and explore in your body and you should get at least some relief if not some pretty remarkable uh, uh, repercussions in the positive way. Now, if someone came to me with uh, an autoimmune condition like psoriasis, the thing that I would probably recommend is some kind of cleanse. And the deeper the cleanse, the better. So I would, if possible, advise Panchakarma. Panchakarma is an intensive Ayurvedic cleanse protocol. It has a specific diet, a specific lifestyle associated with it, and specific exercises and uh, therapies that you undergo. It is one of the best ways to completely detoxify your body and to return to a state of, let's say, of a baseline normalcy. What happens with autoimmune conditions is that we have that misguided communication in the cells, and that's most likely caused by toxins in the blood and in the system. Panchakarma will be a way to filter that out. Now the problem with Panchakarma is that it takes a long time, it's very strict, it's expensive, and you'll have to take some time off for, uh, you know, of your job or of your lifestyle or from your kids or whatever it might be. So it's not accessible for everyone. So let's talk about a few more things that you can do regardless of what's going on in your life. Three herbs that I'll recommend for working with your psoriasis are going to be first, Trifla. Trifla is a beautiful overall detoxifying agent. Second, turmeric. Turmeric is a wonderful, wonderful, wonder, wonderful anti-inflammatory. So it'll help with that inflammation response. Also really good for pain management and mood boosting so you can manage that stress response. And the third is called Mangista. And this is 
probably the best natural medicine for blood cleansing, which the blood is related to the skin. And so a lot of times when you have skin conditions, it's from the blood and impurities in the blood. Menjisa is wonderful at cleaning that out. In terms of nutrition, some things that you want to avoid are going to be foods that are salty, sour, and pungent. So pungent is like that uh, spicy flavor. If you drink like a hot sauce or if you eat a chili pepper, that's pungency right there. You're also going to want to avoid fried foods, uh, refined foods, processed foods, and then also cold foods, so cold in temperature. So no ice water, no ice cream, sorry guys, or no uh, like iced tea, things like that. So in terms of what to eat, you want to simplify your diet. You want to rebuild your agni, your digestive fire. So simple foods, cooked foods, a lot of veggies, sweet fruits are wonderful. Um, if you eat meat, then chicken or freshwater fish are going to be good. You don't want anything too heavy. And you don't want anything too salty or heating for the body. Another great taste to explore is bitter foods. So your, for example, things like your leafy greens are going to be great. Dandelion, kale, arugula, etc. Also, we have a family favorite called bitter melon. We'll have a recipe in the comments below, a really delicious one. Things also like um, a little bit of green tea in moderation are going to be wonderful as well. So stick to simplicity, give some time to reprocess, to reboot, and then you'll start to bring those other tastes back in. So psoriasis, the skin tends to get dry, irritable, etc. One of the best things that you can do to take care of this huge organ that we have, which is called the skin, to help our immune response and to make sure that you're nice and moist so that you know you don't get that itchiness or that pain or whatever it is is called abhyanga abhyanga is oil massage and it's a really wonderful thing to do a really pleasant thing to do and it's something that i'll recommend doing actually a good amount if you have psoriasis so you could do abhyanga a lot of times um, with with a case like psoriasis so i recommend before a bath or a shower you don't have to do a lot you don't want to drip with oil, you don't want to get super oily, just a thin little layer all across your body. Do that before a shower or a bath, wash up, and then afterwards just, uh, you know, pat yourself down. You don't really want to be abrasive with a towel, and you also don't want to um, wipe away a lot of that oily goodness there. And then if your skin's feeling good, you could go on with your day. If you still feel a little dry, especially those little topical areas, those areas that are inflamed or whatever they are, you can just give another little sheen, a little bit of layer there. And then you could have a little container of coconut oil or sesame oil. I recommend coconut oil if you're blistery, if you're painful, if you're burning. If you're dry and cracked, then sesame oil will be better. You can carry a little container of that with you. And then anytime you start to feel a little dry, just rub that area down. And it should be a really nice way to alleviate any symptoms and alleviate any pain or irritation or any of that stuff. And then finally, the last piece of advice that I have for you guys is to practice yoga, pranayama, and meditation. One of the major reasons why psoriasis happens is through stress. These are tools to manage stress. One of the major reasons an autoimmune condition happens is because of miscommunication between the cells. These practices, yoga, pranayama, meditation, create something called sattva, which is pure intelligence. It is intelligence that's not only here, not only here, but gets down into the level of our cells. So incredible practices for everything, and it's also gonna improve your life in every capacity. In terms of yoga, you don't wanna be doing anything that's too overly physically exerting. You want something that's gonna be building something that's gonna feel good something that you walk out of class just feeling really nice about you want to just walk out like you're walking on a cloud and you're in cloud nine and you're in heaven and just enjoying life so simple vinyasa is great hatha is great restorative yin gentle whatever it is based on your constitution hot yoga may not be the best case for an inflammatory condition like psoriasis uh, Stay in a normal room temperature and make sure that you're enjoying it and you're not overworking, you're not gritting your teeth, you're not overexerting yourself, and you are enjoying. In terms of pranayama, you want grounding techniques. So a few things that are going to be really good are Durga pranayama, three-part breath, 
Nadi Shona, so it's alternate nasal breathing. Brahmari, which is your B sound breath. Uh, also just nice long breaths, so nice diaphragmatic breathing, maybe aiming for about four to five breaths a minute, laying down or sitting, just full long respiration. And now in terms of meditation, there's a lot of different techniques. My personal one revolves around a mantra, but anything that's going to get you to sit still, to have a peaceful, placid mind, and to have a little bit of awareness is going to be fine. We have a lot of tools at Sana to work on that, or you can start to seek out a teacher near you. Doesn't really matter. Have a meditation practice, have that awareness, because that's gonna give you this perspective that for one, you'll have some space to see, oh, I'm stressed, I know how to deal with it, or I can deal with it. You might see that your problems really aren't a big deal and you can just let them go or if the problem is a big deal, you get that perspective and you get to see, you know, oh, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that. That's how I solve it. Instead of being in that fray, containing all that anxiety, containing all that energy, because it's gonna manifest somehow. And for a case like psoriasis, all of a sudden that inflammation comes, all of a sudden that outburst comes. Again, meditation, beautiful practice for anyone. Hey guys. Thanks so much for watching our video on how to deal with psoriasis Ayurvedically. I hope you learned a lot, um, whether it's about psoriasis, whether it's about Ayurveda, whether it's about autoimmune conditions or about something totally different. If you have any more questions about this topic or that you want to ask about um, anything Ayurvedically, then ask via our Ayurveda NJ Facebook group in the comments below in this video or via email ayurveda at sadhanj.com. Again, this video was brought to you by Sana's Ayurvedic Nutrition and Lifestyle Coaching Program. One-on-one -on -one Ayurvedic coaching with me, and I'll help you discover what you need to be healthy, to be vibrant, in, according to your constitution, according to your lifestyle, according to your religions, observances, age, all that. We'll take it all into account. We'll have a lot of fun, and you'll feel better than ever, better than you've realized you could feel. So I hope that you join me for that. Link again is below. And finally, please join us for our previous Ayurveda NJ video, for our AyurvedaNJ.com information, and for our channel. Please subscribe. We always have a lot of great content coming out. I will see you guys real soon. We have a new video coming out real soon about Ayurvedic healthcare, and have the best day of your life. Namaste.